Welcome, welcome. Let me just make sure I press one very important button. Let me just make sure that one <laughs> that doubles up my voice. All right, so let's see who is in the waiting room. Oh my goodness. Hello, beauties. We are streaming live into Facebook oh for easiness. Please make sure you Hello, know beauties. We are streaming. Oh. All right, my lovelies. Karin, finally, I get to see you as well on a video. Oh my goodness, I love everything about this already. Um, for audio quality, please keep yourself muted. Um, I will be probably admitting people throughout, but I wanted to make sure I see your beautiful faces of the ones, and I turn my beeping heating mat off. I always let it go as long as I can to get my butt really warm. <laughs> and then when it starts beeping, because the control panel is broken, I need to get a new one. Um, then, um, oh my gosh, I've got friends coming in. Oh my goodness. When it starts beeping, I turn it off. And now my excitement is so big that that's going to keep me warm. Hello, lovelies. Oh my gosh, I am so excited, honored, humbled. All right, let's get organized. I'm gonna keep letting uh, people in, I assume, because usually people are not always on time. I've got friends here. I've got people that I don't know yet. I got long friends. Oh my goodness, I got new friends, I got old friends. I have to just figure out which view is least distracting to me because I've never held a masterclass so big and I'm so humbled and joyous and um, excited to bring this to you. So while you guys do your thing in the chat, which I'm not gonna monitor for now, you can say hi to each other, you can say where you're from, we have um, a beautiful um, group of projectors here already. I will close this side window. I really want to be as organized as I can while I'm also staying as grounded as possible. So <clears throat> I know some of you are newer friends, some of you are older friends. I am so excited. All right. Let's get this magic party going. <laughs> um, okay. So I was in meditation retreat this weekend. I received beautiful guidance for how to guide you in this class and how to really support you. And um, I have a rough structure <laughs> so <laughs> that when I get distracted because you guys might excite me a little too much and I have to keep letting people in that I have my red thread here but I'm also really setting the intention to the universe to just really bring through what needs to be coming through and um, yeah that's what we'll do <laughs> so here's how this will go um there's nothing really, and you know, you've probably been on a lot of online masterclasses and stuff. So there's, um, this is gonna be, and this is part of why what I've been doing has been working so much because of the authenticity and the clarity and nothing really to hide, nothing really to trick or anything. Since I started implementing that um, and really living that, more and more, 
like my business has started like really gaining momentum and the right people are resonating with my work. So there's nothing really to sell here today. We're going to have a big party, except in the end, I will speak out an invitation to work with me one on one. So for those of you who will stay that long or who are that excited about it and that fascinated by what we're doing here, you will know if this is for you. It's definitely not for everyone, but um, the intention of this masterclass is really more about, um, let me let a few people more in, um, about bringing you what you need at this point in your journey. And I will explain in just a second here how this works, because we're going to use some magic. <laughs> we're not going to just use information. We're not just going to use my eight and 11 point bullet lists that I also have, <laughs> because I'm a 1-3 self-projected projector, and I love information and trying everything out. Um, I'm very thoroughly researched. I love knowing what I'm talking about. My 48 gate helps with that, of course, too. Um, but I want to really demonstrate, especially for us projectors, how important it is to use the energetics, to use our magic. Um, and I want to help bring that through in the most aligned and clear transmission possible. So first of all, I want to also outline who this masterclass or who will really benefit the most from this masterclass. But if you're here and you're enjoying being here, you're so welcome to be here either way. I'm sure you will take some great stuff away. Um, let me see if I want a different view now. I love seeing all your faces. But anyways, um, <clears throat> so this is really for who I've been specializing in working with more. It's for projector entrepreneurs who are really following their soul to build their business, to bring out their mission into the world and whose business might feel stuck or overwhelming or be stagnant somewhere. You've just hit that ceiling and you don't know like what is that thing why is it not going any further where where's my growth stifled um it's also for projectors who want to start a soul-based business who know that they might want to do this at some point or change direction in life or live their purpose more and are just curious to implement their projectorism from the beginning and it's also for projector entrepreneurs who have any other kind of business that might not be um, soul based um, because those principles that we're going to address today, they're also going to um, apply to them. I'm just really quickly checking how the Facebook Live is looking. Perfect. Um, okay, let me just do one thing real quick. And if you want, in the meantime, you can just pop in the chat where you're at like are you already in a soul business are you planning on doing one do you have one that is like stuck or stifled for those of you watching on the internet i'm going to pop the zoom link in here for you in case you want to be part of the party here if not you're very welcome hello sarah lena and more sarah Okay, more self-projected is over there on the Facebook. Cool. So I won't be monitoring the Facebook comments. That's why I'm saying if you want to be part of the live party, you've got to be on the Zoom um, because my attention span, um, I'm a Gemini, <laughs> so my attention span is already a little, you know, challenged. But um, I'm going to focus here on the Zoom. But you guys have the invite now. If you want to come in, this is where the party is at but some people like to watch from the outside. Uh, so the next thing I want to give you, let me just check in the comments real quick where you guys are at. Hello from Mexico, Germany, yay. Illinois, Steve is here, Stockholm, Utah, Finland. Oh my goodness, Italy, Germany. Ich bin auch aus Deutschland, pero también hablo español. Uh, that looks like Canada. I don't speak Canadian. <laughs> uh, 
Andy says, I'm a health and wellness blogger and life coach and wanting to integrate human design into my one-on-one -on -one coaching. How wonderful. Hi from Italy. I've just started my online biz. Yes. Florida, US, 6'2 mental projector, Whitney. Yay. Mill Valley, California. Yes, Kyo. So good. I didn't know you were a projector. That's so amazing. Opening an antique shop with breakfast and lunch. Oh my God, that sounds so delicious already. The work of Byron Katie, coach, solo entrepreneur, one three self projected. Oh, I was going to say, we, all, we don't have the same cross of consciousness. I am so excited, Christina. Oh my goodness, six two splenic, three six, four one self projected from Germany. Whoop, whoop, the self projected <laughs> party. Mental from Latvia, Sweden, split. Oh my God, how many wonderful people. Oh my God. Okay, five one, Annapolis, Maryland, three five, splenic. Okay, spiritual mentor. Got it. So I feel like we're very much. Um, aligned here already we already <laughs> we're already um in our own little microcosm admitting more beauties into the party room <laughs> i just love having a good party so i i just love you know having everything like all the spiritual stuff like it doesn't have to be a serious thing right all the business stuff it doesn't have to be a serious thing should we take it seriously it's a good idea, right? But can we laugh about all the silly stuff that life brings us at the same time? I sure hope so. <laughs> One three emo also Gemini. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you know what that likes. <laughs> What's that like? What else do I need to learn and try out? Oh, I just love having a good time. And that's really also a big piece of um, why my business has really started taking off because I have allowed myself and my boyfriend always calls me a, a pleasure hound. <laughs> it's probably my 35 and my conscious son, son where I'm always hunting for more adventure and more um, exploration and experiences. But like for us all, for projectors, like joy, allowing the joy, diving into the joy and bringing that into our business because that's where it becomes alive. That joy and bliss is like the sacral we don't have. So, oh, Christine has got her photo back on. Yes. So here's the permission I want to give you for this class. Oh, let's let Sarah into, where is this whole line of letting people in? Oh, I've got to leave this side thing open apparently so I can see who's coming in. <sighs> We're doing so much work already. Can you feel this? I want to give you permission to receive. And as I work so much with sacred plant medicines, I have been so fortunate to understand the energetics of being a projector and especially my projector specialties from a very fine-tuned angle because in these sacred spiritual journeys you get so lucky to see and perceive things on that deeper energetic level that in real life well what we call real life everything's real life but in the 3d we have to get so fine-tuned in order to know what our energetic mastery and specialties and gifts are so even just this last weekend, when I was in sacred ceremony, I got to understand how a lot of this magic works. So I can't say if that's the same for you, but for me, a lot of how it works to learn from me is actually not through the information that I give you, even though that is also really valuable and well-researched and tried and tested. Um, and it's a big piece of what we need to implement in order to, you know, we work together with the heart and the, the mind and the body and all these things work together, but it's, it's energetically. And so for you, by setting your intention to get out of me, what you really want, what you came here for today, you open yourself up to receiving it from me because how I work is 
I keep myself as empty as possible so that as much as possible can flow through me into you in the form of a transmission or an aha moment or a breakthrough or a deeper understanding or a clarity or however you want to call it. So I want you to really give yourself permission to leave your check your ego in the code room, right? That one that always like, oh, I already know that. Um, I wonder if this is going to work. I don't know what she is. Is it really true what she's talking about? Because ultimately, no one can have the truth, right? And this is such a beautiful learning from from Buddhism, right? In the in the first line, I think of the Tao Tse Tsing or how that book is pronounced, it says, the Tao that can be spoken is not the true Tao, which has given me such a deep understanding of, we all just have stories. And these stories are important. But on our path to finding the highest truth, the deepest spiritual wisdom, the highest communion with consciousness, when we get there, we will know because there is no story there. There's nothing that can be expressed or spoken. So everything on the way there is just us trying to make more and more sense of life. And that's where limiting beliefs are so interesting, right? Because every belief is limiting as soon as it can be thought or spoken. And that is okay because we just work within our limitations and what I want to invite you to do and open yourself up to is just the opening to what is the next most aligned belief or story that I can carry? What is the, what is something more in line with the higher truth that brings me value and everyone that I need to serve? And we're just always constantly, and this is my right angle cross of consciousness, I just always hunt for consciousness, right? So I always hunt for the highest truth, but I will never get there until I'm reunited with it. And understanding the human condition on this level and understanding that I will not tell you anything that is true for you here, but you want to open your consciousness up to receiving a higher truth for you. And so that's how my vehicle works. And so basically, you've probably heard this before when you've worked with other coaches or heard somebody say, say, I just wanted to work with you because I wanted to be in your energy. That is just really another way of saying that you want to learn through their, from their embodiment and from their experience, because that's where the energetic transmissions come through, as opposed to when you are teaching um, information right? All the things I could tell you information-wise today about this, we could probably get done in 10 or 20 minutes, right? But I want to make sure that the intention is set up, the container is set up, that you open yourself up to the energetic understandings of how important it is for a projector to embody, to walk out talk, to be in integrity, And to really put our soul into what we're doing, because energetically, this is where we qualify for the leadership that we are bringing into the world with our embodiment and walking our talk and with being real. I could tell you, for example, that I am very qualified to help anyone and everyone in their relationship. And I've even saved a relationship with a couple last year working with them for half a year and still I will not go out there and put myself on social media and say that I have the dream relationship because my relationship is incredibly difficult and it continues to be and we love each other dearly but I cannot say okay I've done all the work it's amazing now and this is very much about where the magic comes in as a projector in that leadership of vulnerability, of really showing up and saying, hey, I don't have it all figured out. But when we have the confidence for what we have figured out, that's where we show up in the leadership. And we are here to be leaders. We are here to guide. We are here to build the new paradigm of 
working smarter, not harder, because even generators are burned out, right? We are here to guide people's energy. And we can only do that when we guide our own energy first in the most aligned way. So allow yourself to receive, allow yourself to fully activate. You can take notes if you want to. You can always come back and watch the replay. And I also want to invite you to be fully present and open your heart to receive. And the, not for no reason that gates one and two, which if you look at the I Ching where the whole 64 gates are based upon, they're written like a story and they start with gate one and they end with gate 64. And gate one and gate two are in the G center, in the soul connection, in the heart, in the in the magnetic monopole. And that's where we start, in the heart. Gate 63 and gate 64 are in the head center. So for me, there's a very clear direction of where we start our journey. So let's close our eyes together for a moment just to really bring our energy into the right place so that you can really open yourself up into your magnetic monopole to receive whatever you need to receive today. Just for a moment, allow yourself to close your eyes, ground into your seat, settle your energies from where it's exciting into the other parts of your body. And really just visualize opening your heart, making it a receptive flower. And allowing your mind to take a back seat for now, really using it as it's meant to be used as a back end processor guided by the heart, by your G-Center. I'm not talking about the human design heart, will center, even though the two of them together make the heart chakra, but we're really talking about the G-Center right now. Bring your attention and your awareness and your energy into that G-Center. Set your intention. <clears throat> for this class today. And then gently come back and open your eyes when you're ready. Mm, how delicious. Let's look at the chat real quick. Beautiful intention, Rena. Thank you. So I want to start with you with something that is really near and dear to my heart and really beautiful. And that has helped me understand my journey for my purpose and my mission here on a much deeper level. And it is really my dedication to the journey of changing the paradigm of how we do business as projectors. And what has come through for me recently is this beautiful analogy of the mountain. And my job is really to be a Sherpa I'm going to help you up the mountain. And whatever the peak of the mountain for you is, and we know from life experience that the mountain seems to keep growing and maybe we'll never get to the peak. 
But we can see the mountaintop as like our temporary goals, because once we get there, we'll see, okay, there's another goal that we now want to address. And we are all moving up that mountain. And I am here to really provide you with what you need to get to that mountain peak. Let's just call it mountain peak, even though we know it's just temporary. Unless you're one of these people, when you get to the mountain peak, you're like, okay, I can stay here. I don't need to do anything else. So I have gathered so much and so many resources, and I'm providing so many resources for all you beautiful projectors, solopreneurs to make it up the mountain. And a lot of them are for free on my website. I know a bunch of you, especially Steve, has been very thorough in um, going through the <laughs> workshops on my website that are for free. And if you really do the same thing and you allow yourself to receive from there and you allow yourself to start embodying and applying all those valuable tools that I give you, like, then you make it further up the mountain, I promise. There's so much in the group in Projector Purpose Playground that's available for free. So for everyone who is not taking advantage of these packages, like those are all my mules at the base of the mountain. And I've got a few stations across the mountain further up to, there are mules, you know, um, that can help you up the mountain a fair bit, you know? Then we have some lower price offers on my website as well that can also help you further up the mountain, but they are starting to, you know, it takes a little money to keep the mules at that station. I need to keep them fed, you know, it's a little, I needed to build a shed here because anyway, so those are like lower price. Then we have some group offers once in a while that I offer group um, experiences where we really make a lot of progress as a projector group, which we just recently did in Projectors Unlimited. It was just the most elevating, transformative and life-changing journey for all of us because you can probably already feel it, but when you're together in a group with other projectors, the energy is just like nothing else. When you are seen by other projectors, the practice of that is like nothing else. It's like one of the ladies in the program, she half joked, but I think she also really meant it. Um, she said being seen by another projector is like being seen by 1 million generators. So we could really practice being seen in that container on a whole nother level, which is what a lot of us projectors have struggled with or are struggling with to bring our services, our gifts, our magic out into the world, right? So, and then, you know, my, my private container is a little more like the oxygen tent close to the top of the mountain where, you know, I you like you've made it this far up the hill and you're like, Alex, it's really thin up here. Do you have an oxygen tent? And I'm like, yeah, let's get you in the oxygen tent so that you can make it to the peak of your mountain. And this is really how I understand now my whole sales process, my marketing journey, everything. Like it comes from this energy and this has changed everything about it because you can bet that my sales and marketing journey in the beginning was the most hopeless and pathetic thing that I've ever done in my life. And I master things really quickly with my 35 in my conscious son. And I just could not get the hang of how to freaking sell and market my things that they feel good and they get received well, and that we can change the world together. So now that I'm coming from this energy of really just like, okay, this is my mountain and my current place is up here. I love doing all the work, but because I am such a, <laughs> a hunter for consciousness, I'm always evolving really, really quickly. So I cannot always spend all my time more at the base of the mountain because I want to be up here. And the people who are more up here as well, and they want my help in the oxygen tent, like that's where I can do my 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 specific brain surgery, not that I do brain surgery, but that's where my specificity and my, my genius lies. 
Um, my genius was down here as well at some point, and that's where I have put together all these resources. But um, that's why they're mostly self-study and find it out for yourself because, you know, I'm further going up the mountain and whoever is with me and can catch up with me, you know, we're always continuing. So just understanding my marketing and sales process from this angle has been so valuable because it has turned everything around from you don't need to trick anyone anymore or feel like you need to, or, oh my God, now I need to use all that marketing and sales psychology to really get people to sign up with my offer. No, because I come from this place where I have an overfilling cup. I have so much to give. It's not even funny, like energetically and information wise. And that's why I can make so much available for free and in those um, lower priced offers as well. And so it's my deep honor to guide you up the mountain as a Sherpa, whether in person or in spirit. And <laughs> I'm so happy um, you're here with me because the world really needs more projectors to be bringing the magic. We have so much wisdom. We have so many magical gifts. And I see this all the time with my partner who's a generator and my ex-husband who's a manifesting generator. They benefit so much from our guidance and not even by telling them what to do, but often even just by example. And especially if you have a six line in your profile, right? The role model piece. But even if you don't, just like the embodied projector activated in their gifts and magic and service to the world from a pure heart, from integrity, from an overflowing cup, that's what's needed out there in the world, the wisdom, the guidance, the love. And this is what this class is all about, to show you where I know that so many people are hanging with bringing their gifts out into the world and which parts to focus more on in order to be able to do so. So my hope is that you are one of those projectors who wants to bring their magic and their wisdom and their gifts out into the world more because hell, we all know it's needed. <laughs> we are the magicians. We are the energetic wizards and witches and we can also do, we can do things, but our primary focus is to master the energetics, which is walking our talk and embodiment. All right. So I just wanna tell you a little bit more about me. So you know who you have in front of me. I know, I, I know a lot of you already, or some of you have um, got a better sense of me from having worked with me or from having known me outside of the online world or um, from having followed my stories for a while or my in internet posts. But yeah, I've been specializing on working with projectors for about a year now. And before that, I did a lot of readings. I got certified with Karen Curry Parker, but I've also since then studied a lot of other things, especially Gene Keys and the I Ching um, and a lot of Cheth and Parkin's work because he's also a projector and I just get a lot of energetic transmissions when I read his stuff. So anyway, I did a lot of readings. I worked with manifestors for a while as well because they are so needed and I was supporting them. Um, I did a bunch of family readings as well, but um, I really like what I came back to is just like the joy of working with projectors. And um, before that, I was a gut health coach because that was something I really had to heal for myself physically in order to be able to serve. Like that's where a lot of our um, energetic power comes from is having a healthy and intact body. So it just got really tiring telling people what to do all the time, like take this supplement, don't eat this, don't, don't do that, take these pills, take those pills. And it wasn't really in alignment with my projectoring and my right angle cross of consciousness. Um, 
but yeah, before that, I worked in Silicon Valley in the social media and the internet industry for a long time. Um, I was employed at one of the sub companies of monster.com and I did product development, I did marketing and lead generation. So I've been in the internet and the social media industry for a long time. Um, and after I, I quit there um, because I wanted to have more time for my honeymoon <laughs> and then the internet crashed, uh, the whole world crashed in 2008. Um, and then my ex-husband and I decided to form our own startup, which went really, really well. We we founded a, we created a, a Twitter app for the iPhone, even though there were already 40 other Twitter apps out there. And from the outside, you could have said, don't do that. There's a Twitter app for everything already out there. But we had something that we wanted to install and implement and do that nobody else was doing. And so it got incredibly successful in Japan for some reason. And then Fukushima happened. It became number one in Japan. It also became fairly popular in the US. And so even though, and this is really a beautiful reminder for all of you, even though there were already so many other apps out there that did the same or a similar thing, we got to have a lot of success. And <clears throat> we made it a seven figure, figure thing. And we were able to buy two properties in San Francisco from it, which if you know San Francisco property prices, <laughs> that's a pretty nice achievement. So you really need to know how to distinguish yourself. Where are you not the same? Like know your specialty, know your magic, know your specificity, know that when you own that, you don't have any competition, even though it might look like you do. So it's been pretty crazy when I realized just a few days ago that I've been an entrepreneur and building businesses for 12 years now, even though I still feel like every day I'm such a novice. But being a novice is also in my, um, in my human design. I have my, my motivation is need and then um, I'm a novice. So I'm always meant to master one thing after the other, master, 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 master. So that's my one three, thankfully, is supporting me with that. But um, yeah, that's where it's really important that you know yourself. What is your specialty? What is your expertise? Where are you like you are no, like nobody else, right? And then there could be hundreds of people out there that do a similar thing. It's not about the doing. It's about who you are being. Yeah, and so, <laughs> but my projector business journey has been pretty tough, you know? I've only really started last year after three and a half years of doing this coaching thing. And like I said, I started with gut health, but still like the learning on how to run a business in an aligned way is the same, no matter what kind of coaching or serving or healing you do. It's been pretty rough because only like last year did I start making significant income and I finally got to bring my business almost up, almost up to six figures. Um, last year, which I'm super humbled and grateful for because I get to do what I want all day long, except those times when I have to fold my laundry. But you know, there's always a percentage and that's our edge of practicing. How can we even enjoy those pieces in the day where we're doing what we kind of don't think we want to do and how can we teach ourselves how to enjoy them? But anyway, I'm pretty blessed that just being said that I'm pretty blessed and but it's been a long journey and that's why ultimately I knew because this has been my longest journey of figuring out how to make money with my soul's work, with my soul's message. Um, that's, that's been it, you know, that's been my longest journey and how to sustain myself and my family with that and how to harmonize my twin soul flame relationship. But I'm still like, that's not ready to be shared yet because we're still the percentage isn't high enough yet to, to share the mastery. Let's just put it that way. So I was a lot of studying these last three and a half years of all kinds of marketing, sales techniques, a lot of generator teachings and impl implementing what works, what doesn't work, trying it out. 
understanding that that can all work depending on the energy that's behind it and just really understanding which ones work for me which ones are most joyful for me which ones do i want to make work like that is really the most important question as a projector really is like what do i want to make work and then put our energy behind that and really matching this up with my human design and my astrology i identify very much with projectors and with being a projector but I also want to say that I love working with astrology and human design together because A, I love systems and puzzles and B, they're just pieces that human design can do that astrology doesn't show and the other way around. So by combining them, you really get the best out of both worlds and you get the most comprehensive view of the conundrum that you are. <laughs> Because oftentimes why we are having such internal conflicts with ourselves is because we are so confused that we have so many contradictory energies inside of us, right? And when we learn to understand, oh, that's a piece of me, like I have the army general, like warrior um, in me, and I can bring that out in my previous jobs, they used to call me slave ship in German but that was just because I was always on them like a like a bulldog like have you gotten this done have you gotten that done like I can be like that but my growth and my expansion is in a different part of me which is the harmonizer my Libra you know and so understanding that we have all these contradictions inside of us and that we can confidently earn the, uh, own them and give ourselves the permission to be all the energies, right? Like we all have all of the chart. It's just, there are some parts of the chart that are louder in human design and in astrology where you're like, okay, I see a theme here. Like I have a lot more of this than of that. So it clearly means that I'm meant to focus on this more than on that. But that is still also a part of me and it might come out when I get hurt. It might come out when I'm insecure or when I'm tired and I wanna just bark at everyone, right? Then, ah. <laughs> want to snap everyone's hands off at night when I'm tired and I get bitter. I'm not like this at night when I'm tired. You can ask anyone in my life. That's why I go to bed early because I've learned to, it's, it's damage, um, how do you call it? Uh, damage prevention, basically. But that's why when we get to know ourselves, like that's when the beauty comes through, right? yeah so another fun fact was that it was um, featured in yahoo finance last year as one of the human design coaches to watch for last year 2021 and that really gave my business a beautiful boost and otherwise i love nature i do gardening a little bit i have chickens um I have a horse that I get to ride, not as often as I want to, but I'm going to start again soon. And we do German classical dressage, which is another thing that I'm aiming to master because it's so beautiful and harmonizing. Charts are my favorite thing. For everyone I meet, I ask them their details and um, I put it in my software and then I get to understand them in connection with their charts. And with my girlfriends, I <laughs> we do chart things all day long <laughs> over messenger or text it's just the most hilarious thing and um, they give me so much wisdom they give me so much backup my charts have given me the confidence to show up like this and to really listen to soul and to just really have see the chart as kind of my scaffolding like my my pillars in my back it's like okay this is all my information and it's backing me up and it's showing me the direction and I can be fully open-hearted and trusting and going where I need to go while listening to soul. And I also have two children who already know their human design types, of course. I have a manifesting generator, eight-year-old boy who has a ton of energy, who I'm constantly guiding in some way or another. And I have a beautiful 11-year-old um, splenic projector, wise daughter, going into teenage years. So I'm sure many of you know what I'm dealing with. Um, and my ex-husband and I are sharing a building together to co-parent from. And he's still really my family. He's my best friend. He lives downstairs. I live upstairs. And the kids only have one set of rooms. 
and it works really well. And it was actually my partner, my boyfriend, who suggested this a couple of years ago. And I was initially, I was mad because I was like, thought you wanted to move in with me, but he's like, yeah, we can do that too. But for now, I think this is the right thing to do. So I'm very blessed in many ways also that my ex-husband really is a saint. So yeah, just wanted to honor that for a moment. <clears throat> so the other thing that's really important about me and my deconditioning journey, I think to know is that I am a very avid um, supporter and really passionate about using entheogens about for deconditioning. And I have been working a lot over the past six years with a sacred plant teacher of ayahuasca. And I've worked a lot in sacred mushroom journeys by myself as well. This has been huge for my healing, for my deconditioning, for my emptying my cup and filling it up with new wisdom. And if any of you are familiar with like how these plant teachers often work is by opening more pathways in the brain as well as doing much other magic. But that being one of the pieces, um, I've always been very fast to adapt in life to whatever I read. I have always, maybe it's my openness, but really fast to implement whatever I want to implement and change. I'm very octopusy. I've always been like that. Um, but the entheogens and working with these sacred plant teachers has really opened that up on a whole new level because um, letting people in because they just really help open up the brain and when we are stuck in in old belief cycles or habits you know a lot of the, what the problem is around that is that our the the brain grooves are so deep you know and by opening up these new brain pathways, either through microdosing or through sacred plant journeys, meditation, there are a lot of other technologies out there as well. Um, hypnotherapy, there's a lot of other ones, just like I personally love working with these sacred plant teachers because they just really resonate with me and they've taught me so much. And um, it just really helps to open up those new pathways where you can easier form and create these new habits and ways of being. So they've been a, a really beautiful and important source of wisdom and teaching for me over the last six years. And um, I've participated in about probably over 80 sacred ayahuasca journeys by now. And for the last five years, I've also been working as an assistant with my shaman in those sacred ceremonies and it's basically the same what I do in everyday life just with the plant teachers so it's really really beautiful when you get to align your life with your values and everything that you want and I think that is so beneficial for us projectors <clears throat> because then we can just make sure that every little corner of our lives feeds our mission right and our mission being our joy I feel like we're not as much the hunters for the big money. We're not like the managers and not judging anyone, but it's just like their focus and their marketing. And it's more like, it seems more money driven. And even though I have nothing against money and I love money, for me, what is my true fulfillment is to feel like this in my life, to have all these corners of my life set up in a way that they support my joy and my flow and my mission and my purpose that when I show up, for example, on these master classes or on my client calls or in program creation, that I can show up with so much fullness and so much joy. So, yeah. And when I first started working with the sacred medicine, I went to the Peruvian jungle for four weeks um, into a silent retreat, which was one of the most challenging things in my life being a Gemini and loving to talk a lot, but um, it was very, very transformative. So yeah, born and raised in Germany, born in Cologne, grew up on a farm, basically in a little tiny village with cows and chickens. Um, then I moved to California in 2007 for love when I met my ex-husband and um, yeah. And I used to work in corporate. I used to work at KPMG, one of the uh, the big, how do you call them? Uh, is it the big four or the big five? 
Um, and I used to, I, I studied tax law, business law and tax law. And it's just another thing of being a projector, really loving systems, you know, and puzzles and fumbling things together. But yeah, then I pivoted really hard into the Silicon Valley internet industry. But you know, that's the octopus piece of me. So yeah, I feel like you know a good amount and what's relevant, hopefully, um, for you to know how much and in what ways you want to resonate with what I'm bringing. And um, I think the most important piece as we dive more into the quote unquote content of this masterclass is to let you know that um, my business really started taking off more when I started to consistently listen to soul. And whatever that means for you, right? But this is what your authority is here to guide you with. And hold on a second. Our soul speaks to us through the heart. I believe that thoroughly through the, the sense of self, through our G center. And whether you have it defined or undefined, it is available for you. Where you have it defined, it's very, it's a very known energy to you to refer to your heart as guidance. Um, but for many of my clients who are undefined in their G center, I have been able to teach them that, how to use it for direction because it is available for everyone because everywhere where you are undefined in your chart or white that's where you're meant to become wise about it like i have a completely undefined completely open will center for example and root that doesn't mean i don't have willpower that doesn't mean i can't use my adrenaline to get things going i'm just i just had to learn to become wise about it in exchange with the outer world where we are defined in our chart we always have access to those energies. And for those of you who saw my post in the Projector Purpose pl Playground just a couple of days ago, maybe yesterday, I was speaking about also really focusing on deconditioning your definition in the chart, because that is where you are serving from. That is where the energies that you emit. So you want those to be as clean as possible. And I have been listening to my heart unknowingly since my 20s. So over 20 years, I was unknowingly following my self projected guidance. And at one point, I was just so indecisive, like open head, open Ajna, open everything except G and throat. And at some point, I was like, I just never knew how to decide. And at some point in my 20s, I realized that my heart is basically the only thing that's giving me reliable guidance consistently. So I was able to really identify that that is my authority before long before I knew about human design. But um, intuition is also how our soul speaks to us. And that could look all kinds of ways. And if you're splenic, you will know it's those little hits of knowing before your brain switches in, like, right? Before you go like, oh, I wonder if that's a good idea. Like that, <laughs> your spleen is over as soon as you get to that thing. Um, it's also your loud nose, right? When you have a spleen, it's like, not just like, what is a yes or what does it say? But it's also like, my daughter is really good at this. She's like, no, <laughs> like almost before I even ask, finish asking the question. So it's like, I want to, I'm really enforcing that in her so that she can honor that and really like learn to follow her own guidance or emotional authority is like that knowing, you know, and come looking at your chart and where else you are defined when you have the emotional authority, but just really like waiting for that clarity in your body, that calm grounded clarity in your body over time, right? What does that look like? Or, you know, mental projectoring, like the soundboarding, where in your body does it feel expansive when you process, right? Because some mental projectors have the throat defined, some do not. So when you process, sometimes when you speak as well, because sometimes that's really helpful for soundboarding, but becoming wise about all the openness in your body, like where does it feel expansive? Where do you feel the yes in your body for something, right? So using your 
authority, your human design authority, really to connect to your soul, to your intuition, using your heart as well, asking your heart, you know, like drop into your heart, like we did in the beginning here, like asking, for example, dropping in there and asking like, is this, does this feel expansive or does this feel contractive? Because usually when we feel contractive about something, it's either like, oh, there's some conditioning that's like giving us a fear or if it feels expansive then it's a yes most likely right but really getting to know your body using it as a compass listening to soul not listening to your many gen business coach who tells you you should post more on your personal facebook profile to get more um, momentum going that is not in alignment if it doesn't feel good to you right not showing up on linkedin and, and writing and, and hassling people, if that's like, if you have like an inner, oh God, I don't want to do this, right? That will never, never work for a projector. So really allowing yourself to tune in with your soul, wherever that shows up in your body. And for me, that's just, I feel like that's why self-projected, we have it so much easier in a way, because all we need to do is just really tune into the heart and feel if it's expansive, is it, it's a yes, if there's no reaction, it's a no. If it's contraction, it's most likely some conditioning that wants to be looked at. And conditioning, you know, just like a story that hurts our body through our soul kind of thing. A story that we hold about ourselves, you know, that's what keeps us so small. That's what keeps, sadly, so many projectors for not allowing themselves to be seen because of those stories you know of like oh my god i don't know what my neighbor will say when they see me like that on on social media afraid to be judged you know for being that weirdo that says those weird things that we all want to say <laughs> but i wish we all said those weird things more giving yourself i want you now right now to give yourself full permission to say all the weird things just really open yourself up to your weirdness and say all the weird things that your soul tells you to bring out into the world because it's needed. And you can bet your ass that there's someone who really needs to hear it. And you're really just doing humanity a disservice by not saying those weird ass things. I'm saying hella weird ass things right now. And you're still here, right? So it's this rock solid confidence and trust that you have in yourself, in your transmission, in your wisdom, in your guidance. And this is really what has gotten me to this point where I'm now so honored and humbled and grateful that I get to guide projectors. And if you know projectors, they're a very discerning crowd. <laughs> I had to earn my way to get here. I've gotten, I'll post this on social media and in my email soon, but I wanna tell you guys at some point that story of me in complete not alignment with integrity and pulling a big shitty deep one and getting completely punched in the stomach by the universe. And how it all turned out into a beautiful story of it worked out really well in the end, but yeah, I really, <laughs> that's why we have to laugh about these things. So we have a bunch of fun things here, but I want to look real quick if any of you have any comments or what you guys are saying here. <sighs> mm -mm -mm. Rena says, I want to know how to stay in a place of love without stepping away from or outside of my personal place of internal power. Yes. Karin says, sharing my vulnerability. Yes, you, new to me. I want to know how to get paid for being me without being a human design coach. Yes, that is the most beautiful thing when we get to do that. Steve says, today I am open to whatever is offered from the universe through this webinar. I've pulled Alex out of her oxygen tent a lot over the previous days. Alex is always receiving, yes. And that is a big thing that I needed to understand about my being is 
mastering the divine feminine energy of receiving, right? And really opening up to that continually more and more and more. And just funny side story real quick, this, this weekend in sacred meditation, I had, I just always have the biggest laughs on those meditation in those ceremonies as well. But I sometimes I sit there and I'm like, oh God, I am so bored with myself. And then I need to laugh because I look at the time and I'm like, it's only 8.30. Are we really going to do this for three more hours? And the medicine really tortures me by bringing me to this deep inner place of being bored with myself, right? But I understand, I understood on a next deeper level this weekend that when we want to open up to receiving on the next level, we have to be okay with that boredom with ourselves, right? Because when we are so conditioned and we're always reacting and we're always like, picking a fight or whatever we're doing when we're answering that text message, even though we know we shouldn't and our thumbs are doing it anyway, because we want to get that adrenaline hit so that something happens inside of us and we're really bored, right? Otherwise, and we need to fill that hole of emptiness inside of us with social media or a, a fight or whatever else entertains us or information, right? And then I had to understand and I was deeply schooled on learning how to be okay with the boredom inside of me in order to be really stay open to receive because to be able to receive on this next level, whether it be clients, income, wisdom, transmissions, love, hugs, you know, whatever you want to receive, but you really can receive the best when you allow yourself to be empty and being empty means that you sometimes have to be okay with that inner state of boredom with yourself, which makes me laugh because I don't like to be bored with myself. But anyway, thank you, Steve, what a beautiful reflection. And it's so nice to finally see your face and get to understand who you are a little more. Lisa says, I'd like to know, as I have heard so much about creating offers from our defined centers, but I wonder as I have some much so much knowledge from my open centers yes and it all goes together just want to invite you to really see your definition as transmission and really cleaning up your definition alex is reaching for knowledge similar to reaching for consciousness <clears throat> well i see consciousness as the fabric or God, or the universe, or whatever, or the quantum field. There's so many words for it, right? Knowledge is a part of it, but um, our minds can only grasp so much, especially our conscious minds, right? So sometimes consciousness is also emptiness, and emptiness and nothingness is so celebrated in so many spiritual wisdom cultures over the, through, through the world, right? So Ulrika says, love this. Thank you. Val says, permission to say all the weird things is such a gift. Thank you. You're welcome. I give you full permission. Because I can tell you guys that it works. It works. It works for you to feel good when you say the weird shit. And it works for everyone who's aligned with receiving it. And I also want to give you permission to really own that you're not for everyone. Like projectors have a very specific taste of medicine. Um, and we're not for everyone. And the ones that are for us, they will know by the weird shit that we say. <laughs> Kiyo says, I have to go off to another meeting. Thank you. It's so nice to see you. I know her from our school. I didn't even know. Another meeting too. Okay. Andy says, so that is an, so is that an invitation to say weird things? Yes, Andy, you have full permission. What weird things do you want to say that lie on your tongue, that Give your throat chakra a traffic jam and that clog up your heart. What are those things? Tammy says, sacred emptiness. I love that so much. Needed to resonate with that. Oh my gosh, Tammy, I'm so happy you're here. Tammy is another very gifted um, human design projector coach. I mean, a projector human design coach that I know from my teacher, through my teacher. Steve says, but when you say the weird shit, people just don't get it. The weird I want to share is my spiritual guide. I still don't have her name. And that is okay. And 
it's not your job to convince people of your weird shit. It's just your job to transmit your weird shit and allow yourself to be seen so that the people who do get it can resonate with it. Like, I'm sure a lot of people on social media have muted me or just scroll through the posts that are weird, you know? And I know there's still some who follow me too, because when I post my family pictures, they're liking them, right? But they're just like, okay, this is weird shit, scroll, 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 right? A lot of people judge us a lot less than we think they would. But we are so afraid of that judgment because we make it mean something about us. When in, in reality, the judgment only has something to do with a judger, not with a judgee, if those are <laughs> correct terms in English, I don't know. But just know when somebody judges you, that's, that's their problem. That feels shitty in them. You don't have to feel shitty with them for judging you. You can just give yourself full permission to be all that you are. And they just wish that they could do that too. Everyone. Okay. Whenever you say everyone and forever and always, but I pretty much can be very close to 100% sure that Everyone wants to have the freedom to authentically express themselves. And when we do that, we give others the permission to do so, which is much more important than hiding in the fear of judgment. So you get all the, <laughs> you get all the permissions today. <laughs> all right, let's do some exercise. If you have a paper and a pen, that'd be helpful. Being silly can be liberating. Totally, totally. I hear a cat meowing. Is that mine? All right. We're gonna do a little magnetism assessment test. <laughs> We're in school now, guys gonna do this right so if you have a pen and a paper you can get your pen and a paper out and i'm gonna ask you guys some questions there's gonna be one two three four five six seven eight questions and we're gonna use a scale of one through ten all yelling at each other outside and 10 is the highest one is the lowest as it is on the number scale but also for this exercise so i want you to really honor your authority for this really not answer them from logic as much as from your body like really practice also using your human design authority for these questions and that could be that initial immediate knowing if you're a splenic projector or you can feel like send your energy back into your heart for this exercise that's a good place anyways to stay um to stay in or just to hang out in like like a bench and then let that intuitive knowing or that feeling arise from wherever it is in your body um when you're emotional authority you don't need to wait three days for the answer <laughs> if you're a mental projector it might happen a little bit more up here you know so just allow but but don't use your logic don't start thinking like oh you know this much of the time this is that so that means that this is that like try to keep the processor out of it and just like come from your practice your intuition you're listening to soul listening using your body as a tool to listen to soul this is really what this whole thing is about like if i had to sum sum up all that i do and everything that's giving me um making me successful more and more and and growing everything and expansion it all comes from having fine-tuned more and more and continuing to how to use my body as a compass and a communication tool from soul that's it you can go now just kidding let's do this exercise so uh, between the questions we're going to close our eyes just to really be 
least distracted and most present with our body and our intuition. So settle your awareness back and your energy back into your heart and then allow the natural number to come up. So the first question is, how much of the time do you attract the clients you really want to work with? And if you don't have a business yet, just answer how you imagine or imagine it or skip the question. How much of the time do you attract the clients you really want to work with? I'm going to write down my number two. Okay, next question. On a scale of one to 10, we're always working with here right now. On a scale of one to 10, how much is your business struggling? Next question. How consistently do you earn the income you want for offering your gifts? <clears throat> Next question. How much does working in your business energize you? Next question, how much fun are you having in your business? On a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the highest. How much fun are you having in your business? Next question, how easy is it for you to show up authentically and be seen? Question number seven. How much do you love your offers? And last, but not very least, how much do you love marketing and sales? Marketing and selling your offers. So, Oh, no worries, Tammy. Um, all right. So I'm curious what has come through for you here. And where you are finding the weaknesses of your magnetism, of your business's magnetism in this way. And if there's anything, any, any drop throughs or breakthroughs or things that came through while you were feeling into those numbers, any wisdom that you want to share in the comments, you're so welcome to type it in. Because every time we bring something in the physical world, even be it that just through writing and journaling and processing or through speaking it, or through teaching it, or through doing an activity that solidifies something that is alchemy, that is manifestation, that is deepening, that is embodying. 
so often when we learn things we keep it all in our heads so the processing and the integration and the embodiment of everything is really where the magic happens and that's what i also see when i work with clients um, in my programs in one-on-one -on -one, i've not seen it because every one of my one-on-one -on -one clients has shown up like a, i almost wanted to say motherfucker but they really have but um in my program, sometimes I have experience when people just feel like, let's just take in this information and then the embodiment and integration piece doesn't happen. There's just um, the transformation does not happen. Tammy says, I attract tire kickers, but not committed clients is my old story. <laughs> Got it. Time for upgrade. Andy says, I'm shifting in the right direction. I'm being divinely guided in a big way right now. Oh my goodness, I'm feeling it. Oh. Karin says, I don't enjoy selling what I do, though I love sharing the beauty. Well, can you just imagine or get yourself behind that sharing the beauty is your marketing and your selling? How could that feel if you make that your truth? if you don't see them as two separate things anymore. Steve says, how much fun I'm having in my business when I started is an eight out of 10. That's a great starting number. I'm all behind that one. Val says, yikes, I learned. I have some work to do, some feeling to do. Three, six emo, oh my goodness, what a ride. To be more magnetic, I think the embodiment is too low for me. Yeah, really check all your areas in life where you're, teaching something where you know you're not walking your talk as i like that deep honesty with ourselves is like the ultimate starting point for everything for us letizia bonsoir hi there the struggle my previous private line the struggle for me is when taking time to learn in order to master some process do you mean you spend too much time with the information Elena says, I can't attract paying clients. I'm earning little selling my gifts. Yes, and that is also a lot of us in previous lifetimes have made these oaths of po poverty, either as a monk or a nun, right? And so a lot of people like do like past life clearings around that, but also just with action, like taking aligned action and aligned being with who you want to be like taking the action in your business aligned with who you want to be, not aligned with your fears, because that's what our subconscious guides us automatically to. But like a lot of expansion and success in life is comes from counterintuitive things. So when we listen to soul, that feels very natural and in line but often our soul will ask us to do things that feel counterintuitive to our body and our mind. So it's just always the two sides of the coin, right? When we need to jump and trust and just really, you know, dive <laughs> and dare and, and taking that action. Sabina says, nothing new for me. Fun, about eight to 10, selling 10, constant income zero. Well, feeling is, that is your truth, because that is what your subconscious truth is, and your subconscious guides you, because it's 95% of what's going on. So I wonder where that comes from. Is it a self-worth thing? Is it a physical energy thing, Sabina? What, what's your intuition there? Steve, my percentage of being authentic, unfortunately, is four out of 10. My fear is being heard, the real me being heard and seen. Yep. And that's where that is our first work as projectors to really work on those fears of being seen, the fears of being heard or like being authentically us because we cannot be recognized. We cannot be invited. We cannot have success if we don't allow ourselves to be seen. It's really like one of my pr previous and now again coaches, she has used this analogy before for projectors of the runway. Like if we 
don't learn how to enjoy being on the runway. And that could be every day. Like I like to post some days I post like five times in a row because my channel is so open. Then sometimes I don't post for days. Some of my clients like to post once or twice a week, right? But it is that when they get themselves on the runway, it's aligned. It's with a powerful message. It's with that full 100% energy behind it of wanting to be discoverable and seen. So that is, Steve, that is the first thing <laughs> for projectors. Letizia, yeah, very frustrating for me when I have to do and do again until reaching the mastery. This is needed, but it is frustrating. It's your inner generator speaking. <laughs> I hear you. Elena says, yes, dear, I'm taking everyday inspired action. I keep doing what I love doing, and I trust that something good will happen. Perfect. And also, now that you have all your numbers together, now you know what to listen to, listen for more in the next part. <clears throat> I tell you guys, I did not put this masterclass together. It was all a 64 gate download. I refined it a little bit, but it was all like, it just like 64 does. So my programs work too. I, my human doesn't take a lot of credit for this, but that doesn't mean I can't be grateful and receive because I'm mastering this. It's just so funny because everyone always teaches you, you need to learn to be grateful and receive and take ownership and I do that, but also I have to give credit where credit is due and the universe gets a lot of credit for this masterclass just for plopping it through in one complete download. Maybe if you have the 64 too, then it happens for you as well. So let's look at the most common, what I call the success stiflers for projectors. So the big first one, of course, is bitterness. <laughs> bitterness and resentment. Where do we feel yucky inside? What have we not resolved? What is your source of bitterness? It could be anything from being overwhelmed, being exhausted, burned out, being tired in the evening, to being so frustrated with always attracting the wrong clients and not knowing what to do with it. And then you build up resentment and bitterness um, for all prospects or future clients. Bitterness and resentment is really just a more passive aggressive form of the manifestor's anger. So when we are feeling bitter, we are not magnetic. And I made a post about this one time and I got major shit for it um, because I was saying we're repelling to people. Um, but it's really just a technical term. Like it's a mechanic, our aura. We're not like this wide enveloping generator aura. Our aura is very targeted and it because it's like a piercing sword. It goes into the other person's aura and it goes very deep. And that's why our medicine is so profound. Our guidance is so effective. And that's why people don't always want to hear our opinion because <laughs> it's... And when we are bitter, other people don't want to let us in. That's why we have to be invited, first recognized and then invited to be able to enter that other aura with that sharp piercing sword of wisdom that we carry. And when we don't come from a clean energy, when we are bitter or resentful anywhere in life, it, it, we carry it in our field and other people do not want to allow us to pierce the aura with our sword to bring in wisdom because they can feel and smell that we're not coming from a clean energy. And the best example and analogy, well, it's a real life example I have for this is my mom is a projector and she has always had, she's a six two, So she's always had the most wise, profound guidance for everyone. Um, but she didn't know about all of this, obviously. And so she has never walked her talk, 
And so she was always giving other people like health and nutrition guidance where she was and has been very overweight and taking two hands full of medication every day with high blood pressure and diabetes, right? Being overweight for so many years. And then when she gave that true advice and she studied um, alternative medicine too, so she had a lot of knowledge and wisdom, but she was saying it from a place of, you know, probably being resentful that no one was listening to her, plus not walking her talk because you could see that she is not living her truth. She's making you want to do something that she's not willing to do, right? How can we as projectors ask someone else to trust our guidance when we are not coming from clean energy of walking the talk, when we are resentful in some area of life, when we are emitting a frequency that is not humble and grateful for allowing another person to let us enter their aura to give them guidance and wisdom. So this was really more an example for the embodiment piece as of it too, but also the same with bitterness. You know, when we're bitter, when we carry that nasty taste on, like people see it in our faces, like everything, like communication is 95, I think is the percentage um, nonverbal. So a lot of our aura speaks, our body language, our facial expression. I read a lot in people's eyes, like where they're at in their journey. Um, but the whole face, I do a lot of face reading. Um, I don't have, I don't have a mapped system, but I, my intuition just knows. And so it's the same for other people, even though they might not be aware of it, but that's when they're like, thanks, but no thanks, you know, um, or our posts when we write them with that bitter energy or our marketing or our sales, it's just never going to go anywhere. So that is like, one of the first things that you have to clean up, like who and what in your life are you resenting? Got another beautiful soul joining us. All right. So really take some moments, do some journaling on this, reflect on that later, like clean up your resentments, clean up your bitterness. What do you need to do? Then the next point, we already talked about this a little bit, the fear of being seen, and especially for your power and your weirdness, because most projectors already know that they're meant to be leaders, right? There's some knowing that you've had all your life that you're meant to guide in a way that you're meant here, you're here for something bigger, and that power can be intimidating to ourselves, right? And, and we cannot own that when we carry that fear of being seen. Really, where and how can you allow yourself to step out on that catwalk, really showing yourself? Be that person that, get judged, that gets judged in your family and friendship circle for saying the weird shit. Make it a fun thing to do. <laughs> then the other thing, and this is really... Um, connected again to the embodiment piece walking our talk is the self-doubt and imposter syndrome because a lot of the time as long as we have self-doubt and imposter syndrome it is actually often because we know intuitively that we are not walking our talk somewhere that the embodiment piece is missing there's also a piece of it often of course that is conditioned um, where we are just feeling like we're not enough or never good enough. And we really need to have that because we as projectors, we are wise. So I trust that you have that inner wherewithal of knowing, like, where are you conditioned that you're just believing that you're not enough? And where do you really know, like, okay, okay, I got some more walking of my talk and embodiment to do there um, and my imposter syndrome um, inner alarm bell was actually going off for a reason. But when we don't embody that confidence and conviction, then we cannot show up as leaders. We won't get recognized and invited. So that's another piece that needs to be cleaned up. Next point, 
and Steve will probably have experience with this already because I know you recently did my um or I did this with Annalena with my business partner and dear friend um our deconditioning 101 three-day workshop which is a free resource on my website if you really want to get further up the mountain so a lot of gold and wisdom and tools in there but especially we talked already briefly about earlier about cleaning up your definition because you want to really emanate out those defined energies in a clean way but also your undefined centers they really need to be cleaned up especially the sacral like all your generator conditioning like make a list take inventory where in your life do you have that generator conditioning where do you still think like the doing 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 is all you need to do like and yes aligned action is gold i do things all the time but for projectors, the energetic alignment is first. So clean up your generator conditioning, become really, really, <laughs> um, become really, really aware of when you are going from a should, when like the only ones that are allowed to get away with like a healthy should is a generator. Like I should do that. Yeah, you should go, go do that. But for us, it's like, no, we shouldn't. If it, it feels like a should, it's not in energetic alignment. And that's different than a fear that's holding you back where you're like, it's like, oh, in order to be seen, I should be posting more on Instagram. No, it's not more. It's you should be posting, <laughs> here's me, shooting you. Uh, you should be posting from energetic alignment. All right, then another really exciting and lovely one is the shadows of your conscious sun and your conscious earth and how well they reinforce each other. Like if you're in the shadow for one of them, you're most likely, it's like a flame that they're like candles that ignite each other. Like the shadow of the conscious, and those are your, in, in case you don't know this terminology, the top two gates on the right in your chart in the black color usually on your conscious side, the top one is the conscious sun, the one below is the conscious earth. And the conscious earth is really what you need to have grounded in mastery in order to be able to express your conscious sun, which is really the tip of the iceberg of your gifts, how you express like, like the most, and for me, like I said, that's the 35 experience, experiments, journeys, adventures, right? Every time, like, like this, this is a party. I take my people on adventures, on journeys, on, and it's all combined with unconditional love. And if you want to go really, really deep into this and understand your conscious sun, your conscious earth on the deeper level and what work you have to do there to clean those up, go into the Gene Keys book because that's just like the depth of human design. It's like... The deepenings on each gate and it really has like the most profound wisdom on the shadows and how they reinforce each other and how but once you step into the the gifts of one of those then the gifts will also really work well with reinforcing each other so really working with the shadows of your conscious sun and your conscious earth then okay hold on a second this is a big transmission I need a little bit of water. Have you guys been feeling this recently when Mars entered Capricorn like a week or so ago? And there's so much to do and there's so much power behind everything to do and all you can do is just try and keep up with staying hydrated. Phew. This is a great segue into the next point because I am so grateful for my body having all this energy to bring these transmissions through and to get everything done that I need to get done in this human world. Because I amplify a lot, I activate a lot, not just in my clients, but also in myself. And so low physical energy and not being healthy or not sleeping enough or not nourishing ourselves well enough, like projectors, that is like one of the most important things bitterness if you don't know where to start start with checking your bitterness and your physical energy if you don't sleep well you need to make that an absolute priority 
if you don't eat well, you don't, you, you need to make that an absolute priority. Anything that doesn't help you with your physical energy. <clears throat> so hydration for the nation is very good. I have a ton to learn or to discover that I am, but I'm really ready and open to it. I love it, Steve. Yes, you are so deep in the journey already. It's so fun to witness. Okay, this is a great segue into the next point as the universe does, um, not knowing or living your purpose. So when projectors are not really aligned with their soul's transmission and mission and purpose and not living it and this is, comes back a lot again to embodiment right um and listening to soul the chart can help us so much like cognitively understanding and so we can intentionally guide ourselves more toward our soul and our purpose but also listening to authority or having a practice of tuning in with your soul for even like the smallest decisions every day. Like, do I want a strawberry or a cup of tea? Like, okay, check with soul. Like your mind can decide, right? You can like decide in the moment, but making it an active practice every day to check in with soul. Like that is such a beautiful practice to really dive in and, um, and align yourself with living your purpose. I have a beautiful client in one of my programs and she was selling ML, an MLM. I think that's the term for it, right? She loves the products, but she was just, the energy wasn't behind it because it wasn't in alignment with her soul's mission and her soul's purpose. We've done a ton of deconditioning together and just through that alone and through coaching together, she has like, she started coaching now and doing really what fills her up and getting her um, money situation raised and raised and raised gently, right? But the gentle growth is the healthy growth, right? We don't, everyone's always looking for quantum leaps and can I finally make that $50,000 a month? But Oftentimes our energy cannot sustain that. So for me personally, a gentle growth is much more sustainable and encouraging to me. So really allowing your soul to tell you, like, what are you doing in life right now that you don't want to be doing? Where in your, life, where in your body are you feeling that conflict that your soul is really trying to talk to you and getting it really uncomfortable in there? And your body is like, no, but this makes sense. This is comfortable. This is the known. This is what I have been doing and um, what I should be doing, but it's getting more and more uncomfortable in there and your soul is trying to tell you something. Then the next point, and this is such a biggie as well for, um, for us projectors, self-worth, valuing ourselves, seeing our magic, really, really honoring and owning our magic and our worth, having loving boundaries, having really high standards, right? For anything in life. Um, but a good, a good check where you can dive into this and just explore and experience in your life is where are the areas in your life where you are tolerating something that doesn't give you joy. And for me, I've had to do a lot of cleanup work in my relationship around this. When my relationship wasn't joyful, um, putting, <laughs> going into victim mode, putting it on my partner, like, you need to give me joy. I'm not having any fun. <laughs> and then meeting massive resistance, of course. Um, and then teaching myself how to dive into a deeper level of joy but also at the same time, putting up boundaries for him and telling him, you know, this is not fun for me. I'm not tolerating that anymore. So a mixture of boundaries and standards and giving ourselves fully what we need energetically. That's sovereignty. That's what we, we are moving into more, out of codependencies, into sovereignty. And when we can do that, 
we are automatically raising our level of self-worth. And when we have a high sense of value and self-worth, we will also find these clients and attract these clients that are willing to pay for our services because they know that they can learn at least about that from us, right? One of my, um, one of my coaches, I think, said it once, um, and it's such a good point. Um, why would I want to learn about how to make a lot of money from someone who doesn't know how to charge a lot of money? And that was such a big, yeah, from me. It's like, how can I learn about self-worth from someone who doesn't embody confidence and self-worth, right? So really understanding that your embodiment as a projector will already attract the right people. And I get so much of this, like in my messages or from previous clients or current clients, like, I just wanted to work with you. I didn't even care what we were going to do. I just wanted to work with you. I just knew that. And those are the people because, and that is the energetic attunement to the embodiment and the walking, the talk and, and the experience. Or when people say, I just want to be in your energy, right? It's not like it matters in a way what we do as well, right? But the big piece comes from like just seeing who is that person and how are they the way they are? And that is where the best results come in when you allow yourself to work with someone from that level of not, not like, oh, I'm a, I'm, I need to work with them because they might know something I don't know. Like, especially as a projector, we learn energetically so well. So really allow yourself to be that person for someone else. But also when you pick your mentors, pick your coaches, pick someone who you really love what they embody. That is also an, a testament to your self-worth. All right, here's a fun one. <laughs> your Saturn gates. Because your Saturn gates, and Saturn, I, I didn't prepare this in an optical way because I don't like making slideshows, so I don't do them because I don't want them to be a should. Um, but let me see if I can describe really quickly what that looks like. Um, I almost always say that it kind of looks like a TH a little bit in the chart on the right. Let's look on the right side in your chart. Let's look, if you don't have a Chiron chart, but if you do have a Chiron chart, you're probably more advanced and know what Saturn looks like. But if you don't have a Chiron chart, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 down. And it kind of looks a little bit like a TH, I always feel like. Can you see that? The 33.5 for me, that TH. And the one above that looks a little more like a J is a Jupiter. That's how I can distinguish these easily. So we're gonna look at your Saturn or you're gonna look at your Saturn because I'm very much about teach a person how to fish because, you know, I only have that much energy. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how to do all this stuff and where to look and what to go for. And then you can go do all this stuff. So 33.5 is my Saturn. And I have an unconscious Saturn too, it's the same. But anyways, um, your Saturn gates will show you a lot. And this is very much in connection to being seen, right? Where um, the Saturn gate shows you where you have limitations in your expression and as an example for me because it's the 33 um it's one of the storytelling gates it's also called retelling it's really about sharing my it's also in my 10th house my business expression in my leo so it's like it's all in alignment but i you know we can only take in so much at a time so when i started diving into my 33 and really feeling into like where have i been like really limiting my expression yeah it's a in my personal stories right it's in retelling that narrative that is more empowering but um my own narrative and so then i started doing that more and it's in because it's in my house of business expression and astrology and then i saw my business really like gaining more energy and momentum so 
your Saturn gates, look in there. Like, what is your Saturn gate or gates? Where are you limiting your expression? Because when you're limiting your expression, you're not allowing yourself to be fully seen. People aren't able to see you in your authenticity as that real you. So check your Saturn gates. And then last but not least of these points, gosh, we're having a big transmission. But the, the last part is not as long, but this is the most important part because this is where you really understand and know where you are and where you need to look and which areas you need to work on next. So last but not least, point number 10, not knowing how to communicate your value to the people who need your guidance. And this is where marketing and sales come in, right? And really understanding that on the next level, really understanding the value of your magic, your services, your programs, your offers, your products, and being really able from soul to communicate that with the people who need you. So I really want to challenge you and take a moment here. I know we're having a long and big masterclass here, but I knew it was going to be big. <laughs> so I don't want to just rattle off information. I also want to give everyone here a moment to integrate and post in the comments, like, which one is the loudest one out of all these 10 for you? Like, where are you saying like, oh, okay, okay. This is my wormhole. <laughs> this this is my, my cracker. This is where I want to get in next. Steve, I don't know if that's your Saturn gate, but if that is your thing that looks like a TH on the right-hand side, 10 down, underneath the one that kind of looks like a J, then yeah. Do you have a good source for, um, I mean, the internet, Google is a, an amazing source. Um, I personally like this book a lot for quick reference. My teacher, Karen Curry Parker's Quantum Alignment Cards um, Companion Guidebook. I don't have the cards actually, I just use the book. If you have an iPhone, it's got also a free iPhone app, which is magic. I use it all the time. Um, just type in Quantum Human Design or Quantum Activation Cards into your Human Design App Store. Uh, <laughs> what's it called? Apple App Store, your human design app store. It's a whole new category. Um, and then you can always look them up on the fly. And the beautiful thing is they have the unbalanced expression, the challenge and the mastery and a very powerful affirmation in there. So you can always check with you, where are you between the shadow and the gift? Where are you between the unbalanced and the mastery? Because we're always somewhere in between, right? And we are the whole purpose of deconditioning, the whole purpose of personal work is to bring our entire chart more and more into the vibration of the mastery of the higher expression of who we are. And when we do that more, we resonate more with soul. When we resonate more with soul, we become more magnetic. We get to live our purpose more. We get to attract the right clients. We get to be more successful. We get to have more fun and the whole world and mad life just turns out to be more magic. As a summary of what we're doing here, but yeah. So Steve, for example, I'm not going to do all because, you know, time. For example, the 60, if that's your Saturn, I want you to check the unbalanced expression first. Um, so it's called in, in quantum human design, it has slightly different names sometimes than classical human design. Uh, it's very empowering language that my teacher uses. So unbalanced expression being to hold on and not allow for growth, to fight for the old and rebuke change, to let the overwhelm of change and disruption create paralysis and resistance. Does that feel resonant? And then the challenge being to not let the fear of loss overwhelm your resourcefulness, to learn to find what is working and focus on it instead of looking at the loss and disruption. And then because the Saturn is showing you the limitation of your expression, it's also really lovely to look at where you're aiming, right? Where you're going, look at the mastery, the ability to find the blessings in transformation. And look, you just started doing deconditioning, right? And diving into that. 
optimism to know how to focus on what is working instead of what's not. So <laughs> I love that you're laughing. You feel so seen right now, don't you? Oh, geez. I love it. Well, here you go. Homework. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I'm glad this is a game show sound. I love it. Ding, dong. Andy's got the fifth, the 40 in the third line and in the fifth line. Restoration. Unbalanced expression being martyrdom, loneliness, and blaming that causes you to compromise what you need and try to prove your value by overdoing and overgiving. Sounds like a generator um, thing there too. But it lives in the will center, so probably overusing your wills, willpower and pushing through things a lot too, if I had to guess. And here the challenge to learn to value yourself enough, self-worth, value again and again, to retreat from community and the energy of those you love, to restore, restock, and replenish your inner resources. Will Center wants a lot of <laughs> restoration time, aka nap time, <laughs> to learn to inter interpret the signal of loneliness correctly, to take responsibility for your own care and res resources and not abdicate your own power to take care of yourself. Mastery, the ability to retreat as a way of replenishing your inner and outer resources and to bring your renewed self back into community when you are ready so that you have more to give. And Andy, I already have a feeling that you might know in the past or present how this has limited your expression. Um, Steve, I won't do your other one because just we have <laughs> double Saturn in 29, devotion and commitment. Yeah. Kemi, how is that showing up for you in your expression? Limiting your expression. Have you been over committing? Have you not known when to let go and when enough is enough because it's a sacral gate? Have you not known how to, know, to commit to the right thing? Have you burned out and depleted yourself because you don't say yes to yourself? You will know. Elena as well, 29. This was for you as well. Accurate, says Andy. Karen says um, she's going to bed. So lovely to have you here. Elena says, sorry. It's enough for today. <laughs> oh, danke schön, Elena. Ich wünsche dir eine gute Nacht. Until soon. You're welcome, Andy. Tammy says, <laughs> yeah, it's late in Germany. Tammy says, I wrote a class called Half Ass to Devote It. <laughs> How perfect is that? So funny. I had this um, sentence come through once also in, in sacred meditation where a lot of funny stuff comes through a lot of the time. Um, it was just regarding my expression on the internet, you know, how to express myself. And it's like the medicine told me or my higher self told me, no one wants to watch you love yourself halfway. And I was like, boom. <laughs> All right. Got it. All right. This is beautiful. I love your participation, guys. You guys are awesome. Okay. Endspurt, as we say in German. <clears throat> Last sprint of the day. It's just highlight these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that I have. I'm so grateful for my notes, guys. I've been so excited for this workshop. I couldn't have followed anything without my notes. <laughs> I get distracted. So the signature success pillars for projectors. <laughs> Val says that would be an excellent tattoo, by the way. No one wants to watch you love yourself halfway. I love it. Please show me. Please tell me you're doing it. Because <laughs> that's just really not inspiring, right? And just so you know, and you probably already know this, but people go on social media to be entertained or inspired, 
right? And when we love ourselves halfway on the internet and we're not really sure and we don't say the weird shit and we don't have our soul's power behind it, we're basically loving ourselves halfway because we're not doing ourselves and everybody else the favor of showing up in our authentic expression. And then they have to watch us love ourselves halfway and that's why they don't wanna watch, right? So if your stuff is getting low engagement, um, and I see that so much um, in one of my previous clients who is here on the call posts um, the opposite side of it. She loves herself so much in those posts and the energy just comes through and you can just feel it. And it's like brings me joy every time. You know who you are. <laughs> and um, it's just such a powerful thing. And we do other people a favor when we love ourselves and show up in this way. Yes, you, Leticia, in your magic. All right, so the signature success pillars for us projectors. And this is going to be faster because I think the big transmission, this is just the, the bookend. <laughs> Being fully seen in your magic. Number one, signature success pillar. Number two, being fully you for most potent magnetism. That means embodying your chart, your astrology and human design or both. I like to put them both together. Saying the weird shit, right? Unclogging your throat chakra and your fingers to really let all that stuff out, you know? That's when you're magnetizing. Number three, having unique and irresistible offers that only you can create. So you may think there's a lot of competition out there, but there really isn't because there's stuff that your chart will guide you toward that only you can do, that you do specifically with the combination of what your soul brings through and with your life experiences and your embodiment. Embodiment, embodiment, embodiment experiences 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 how can you share your wisdom of what you've gone through in life that's what people want to calibrate to in a projector not your book knowledge not what you learn from another coach the information right they want to learn from your wisdom from how you learned to become who you are then there is no competition. Then there are those irresistible offers that only you can create. <clears throat> and then also very important, and a lot of projectors shy away from that because they're like, ah, this isn't so aligned to do marketing and sales. But knowing how to communicate in your marketing the value of what you sell and have that messaging fully aligned with your chart. That's, you know, you want to draw in the magic from all areas. You want to work with aligned marketing psychology. You want to work with the things that work, but you want to put them in alignment with clean energy and your chart and your soul and good intentions and wanting to help and coming from abundance instead of neediness, right? Oh, this was the next number. One, two, three, four, number five, serving from love and your inner abundance giving because you can, right? How many people are out there saying, I don't want to give away my best stuff for free? What does that say about you? That just means that you have a limited pool of information available for your client. When you give so abundantly, you just prove that you are a vessel for universal knowledge, that you are able to guide no matter what information you have, right? Because our guidance is not tied to our knowledge base. Our guidance is something that our energy knows, our intuition knows how to do. Giving because you can. Then the confidence and the conviction in your leadership and your guidance. And that has taken me a while to like really own more that leadership piece. And I was like talking to my coach and she was like, Alex, you just always want to be the nice one. You want to be liked by everyone. You want to be one of them. And I've had huge belonging issues all my life. You know, like I never felt like I belonged anywhere in Germany. I didn't feel like I belonged there. And then here, I don't belong here. 
and it's like there I don't belong there I was like I'm always feeling on the outside and learning how to work with that piece you know and really wanting to belong um and then also being okay with not being liked by the people who don't resonate with me that's been like such a big step into stepping into this leadership confidence and then last but not least number one two three, i think it's seven yep listening to soul like we already said and activating your inner magnetism through soul because you can tell when a human has not hasn't got their soul activated there's just something that isn't quite as sparkly about them sometimes that's something that's just a little bland and boring about them right so we are a combination of human and spirit of earth and spirit rather we are made from earthly materials we are made of minerals and water and we carry air in our breath and we can carry fire in our cells we are meant out of we are made out of all the earthly elements and we also carry spirit and the more we allow those two to really unite in every part of our body by tammy mm, you're welcome the more magnetic we become it's just meant to be that way we're meant to embody our soul so that's why i love charts and i look at them a million times every day because <laughs> that is our map if we don't know how to intuitively follow our soul yet we can use our charts to get us there but ultimately no external tool is meant to guide you these charts all these things are meant here for you to learn to find you in yourself to listen to yourself right because that's where the ultimate success comes from is when you become fully you and not who your coach is or who they tell you you should be or what they tell you you should do it's when you find you in yourself so much that you really really learn how to use your body as that compass and how to listen to the communication from soul in your body and then implement it in your life day by day with the most humble and little things so that when the big things come you know how to do it Oh my goodness, guys, we did so good. So this was it. This was everything. This was the transmission. And like I said in the beginning, um, I just wanted to speak an aligned invitation for those of you who feel called to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, either now or later. I do have between one and two spots available right now because it's very deep guidance and um, I leave a lot of space for it but first of all it's not for everyone right it's for those people who are <coughs> wanting to get to the peak of the mountain and they need that ox or they want that oxygen tent they want my guidance <coughs> and you will know you will know where you're at you will know if you want some of more, my resources that get you a little further up the mountain more free ones more of the lower paid offers of the self-study stuff or a group program i have something cool that i am not quite 100 percent on yet how it will exactly look but it's something very exciting um and it may be called the soul gym um but i don't know the details yet i have they haven't been revealed to me yet so there's more group stuff coming out too but um yeah if you know you're ready for like that precise oxygen guidance at the top of the mountain, you will know. And um, that's for you if you really know you're ready to become visible and to really bring your message out into the world, your gifts out into the world in the most aligned way. And in addition, and this is the most powerful stuff, how to use the collective energies of the universe in order to gain momentum to put the growth in your business in the right direction 
because we all have a different chart and the collective energies show up in our charts all in a different way. So how to use, like, if you have that power behind you on top of like your soul's magnetism, oh my goodness, um, it's, it's working for me. I can tell you that much. Anyway, if those things are all true for you, then this might be the best investment for you because those are the investments where you get so much more out of it than what you put into it. So if you're feeling that and you're checking with your authority and it feels right or you're feeling curious or it's just something that sounds a little bit scary but very joyful and exciting to you, you're so welcome to reach out to me for more details. There's also more info on that always updated on my website. And um, yeah, just in order to really get the most out of that, like the clients that I have had and that I have currently who are getting the most out of my guidance are the ones who are really good at integrating in information and embodying. And like I said, that octopusness, right? Of like hearing something and being able to really switch it and bring it into form, bring it into life, like change the pattern and, and do that like really quick. Those are the people who are like really rocket shipping. <laughs> like I always call my private containers, like that's the rocket ship. It's like, <laughs> you gotta you gotta put your seat belts on. Um, and you really have to have that devotion, like that knowing that your mission and your purpose and your gifts, that you really want to serve those on the next level, right? No half assery, no like, oh, I don't know yet. Um, maybe you know that that is not what's going to get you the most out of this and being really open to guidance right <clears throat> so when you open yourself to guidance then you get to open yourself to all the magic that the universe has available for you either through a teacher or through a transmission or through anything right so if this sounds right to you, you're very welcome to message me and um, we can talk. And before we close this container, oh my goodness, I want to read all this beauty. You go, Val. Yes, exactly. Steve is invigorated. You're so welcome. Letizia, you're so welcome. Andy, I'm so happy I get to share my light with you. Leticia says, one-to-one -one with Alex helped me a lot. Just saying, <laughs> Elena, you're amazing. Thank you so much for your wisdom. You're so welcome. And just because I want you to get the most out of this class, I want to encourage you to post one thing in the comments that is like, or two, that is like the most, you're welcome, Sarah, Sarah. You, I, I want to encourage you to post in the comments like that one or two things that like, you're really taking home because this was a lot. This was a big transmission. And if there was a lot for you in here, I want to really invite you to focus on one or two things to do next. You can always come back to the replay and look or at your notes and say, okay, now I've done this. What's the next thing? But we don't grow by like, we can't climb the mountain in one step, right? So what are the one or two steps you are taking home from this class that you know you want to do next as like a commitment and a little promise to yourself and your soul and your mission. I want to know, so does everyone else. <laughs> Megan says, cleaning up the resentment and bitterness. Hallelujah. That's a beautiful one. <sighs> Ulrike says, Thank you so much for your energy and inspiration. My next step is to get a chart reading. There you go. Elena says, confidence and trust in my gifts. Yes. And he says, taking action on what I am being guided to do. Perfect. Beautiful. Julia says, or oh, Julia, I don't know where you're from. <laughs> I'm in German mode at the moment. Study my shadow of the conscious sun and earth gates. Yep. Excellent. I want to say exclamation mark. I do so much dictating on my phone. Exclamation mark. My kids make so much fun of me. Um, Val says, a huge takeaway for me was the concept of embodying. Yeah, 
I need to do more of it, be more embodied, etc. But it was at the end that I finally understood to embody is to bring your soul into this realm by using your body. Oh my goodness, that gives me heart tickles. Sarah says, I fell asleep, I fell asleep. my soul received the transmission. <laughs> You're hilarious. I will catch the replay bedtime here in Belgium. Sounds good. Uh, bon nuit, I would say. I don't know. Is it French Belgium or um, the other Belgium? <laughs> Yelena says, I want to train to ask my heart in little things, coffee or strawberry. Oh my God. And you will see, this is the most, the littlest things are the most powerful things. So I can't wait to hear how that goes for you. Steve says, fine tune myself and listen to my body. Both. <laughs> okay. Bon nuit then, I say. Um, and I say a big thank you to all you wonderful projector humans who were here today and everyone who is watching the replay and has watched the replay and oh my goodness we did it let me i know a bunch of you have already gone to bed you're welcome megan but i wanted to just pull up and see just steve and me left on camera we did it steve with <laughs> apparently your fear of being seen has been um not very strong so thanks for showing up ah <sighs> I think you're typing something. I'm not going anywhere. Exactly. That's wonderful. Well, here we close up this container. Two hours and 12 minutes. Did we really do this? Yes, we did. We are amazing. You guys are getting all the kudos and I love you. And I can't wait to see you on the internet or in real life soon. Sending you so much love, so many hugs, and um, go out there and slay it. You have full permission. I love you. Bye.